But here's the thing, he warned us. The prophet warned us. He said, well, I'm going to call all my people out on y'all. I'm going to call Whirlpool, Lakeland Hospital, the prosecuting attorney, the sheriff department, and the clerk. That's everybody almost. He said that he's going to call them out if we recall him. And we were successful at getting the signatures to recall him. So here's what happened. I took my wife out to dinner. It was her birthday, April 24th. And one thing about my wife, she's always late. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular day, she was on time. Uh -oh. Uh -oh, we left at 11 a.m. going to Kalamazoo, Michigan. To eat dinner early. Thank God we did. Before I could get to Kalamazoo, Michigan, my phone was jumping off the hook. They said my house is surrounded. They said they had every agency there. They had the SWAT team all across the street. They blocked off the streets. Nobody can get in, nobody gets out. They said that they sent the SWAT team out to arrest me over some signatures. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. Over some signatures. Wow. You see? Wow. And what makes this story so amazing, they don't even have the evidence to even try me in court. But unfortunately, the prosecutor said, we don't need evidence. Lord. <laughs> That's what he said. We don't need evidence to take this man to trial. Some of you was there. Y'all heard him. He said, he said, we don't even have enough evidence. We have no evidence. <laughs> they brought in a forensic guy. They asked him, could you tell us who could have altered the signatures on the date? He said he couldn't do it. He said, could you say Reverend Pinckney did? He said, no. Could you say the person who signed the petition did? He said, no. And, the, and here's the bad part. The prosecutor brought in over 30 people to testify about their signature and the date. And they didn't put that one person on the stand to say that, that wasn't, they didn't sign it on that date. Because they all knew that they had signed it on that date. But they was trying to get me. They didn't care. They don't care about no justice. Mm. Oh, oh, they care about just us. Come on. They want to send us to jail. All right. You see, and it's important that we stand up and fight them and show them. That's why I go over there every day so they can see my face in the courtroom. All right. I go over there and court watch every day so they can look me in the eye and look them in the eye. And I can see them put their head down. So they should be embarrassed. Right. But the point is, we have to learn to fight back. We can't be afraid to let them push us around. We need to be pushing them around. They out here cutting water off. When they cut the water off, they cut it back on. They show them what we're capable of doing. There's so much stuff that we can do when we fight together and not fight each other. If we fight together, we can win this battle. And I know we can win this battle if we take the time out and do it. That's right. We're fighting a battle here. And it's a battle that we can win. But we have to make sure we're doing the things that need to be done. See, in Benton Harbor, we got really two emergency managers, Tony Saunders and Joseph Harris. Hey. Some of y'all might know Joseph Harris. Oh, yeah. Uh, Joseph Harris was like a, he, he was a dictator. He thought that he was bigger than Whirlpool. <laughs> he came in there throwing his weight around, trying, trying to tell Whirlpool what to do. How you gonna tell the person that owned the city what to do? <laughs> he was trying to tell them that uh, there was $168,000 missing. And Cornerstone Alliance, which is a subdivision of Whirlpool, they had misused the money. Uh -oh. But he thought that the commissioners had done it. So he makes a big announcement. <laughs> I'm bringing in the FBI. Uh -huh. <laughs> All over the front page of the newspaper. FBI coming in. They're going to take these commissioners to jail. And then when they found out it was Whirlpool that was behind it, uh -oh. <laughs> they took a trip. To Lansing. They had the, the CEO of Whirlpool, the Vice President of Whirlpool, 
the puppet mayor of Benton Harbor, they had uh, 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 Pachoka, the one who wrote the bill, the emergency management bill, and they had this other black guy named Atterbury. He's a preacher. So they had everything covered. They took the preacher down there to, say, <laughs> just to pray over it. <laughs> but anyway, they went to talk to the governor, and they said that Joseph Harris had to go. And the way Joseph Harris found out that he was leaving, he read it in the newspaper. <laughs> didn't even know that he was leaving until he read the newspaper the next morning saying that he'll be leaving in the next three, four months. <laughs> Joseph Harris got mad though. Now, now you know Joseph Harris now. Uh -huh. He ain't gonna hold you up. He said if you if you find me, I'm gonna blow the whistle. Oh. Everybody going down. Oh. Everybody going down. This is Joseph Harris we're talking about. Yeah. Joseph Harris and, and Joseph now if anybody Joseph Harris, you yeah. know I heal. That's he, right. He's like a bully. You know, he go and he told Whirlpool, he said, if, look, if you find me, you're going down. That's what he told them. And, and look, and the newspaper said the next morning after he discovered that Joseph Harris won't be leaving for a little while. <laughs> Which makes this so important because then this is what corporations do and everybody else do. They go out and try to get something on you. There was $25,000 that they said that Joseph Harris has misspent. So now we got a Mexican standoff. Now we got something that's happened. So what they did, they compromised. And six months later, Joseph Harris had to go. So they didn't send him to jail. He didn't kill on Whirlpool. He just let everything go. Then we get Tony Saunders. He comes in and want to be everybody's friend. <laughs> he thought that he was going to, matter of fact, he even went to see uh, Minister Farrakhan uh, with, with the commissioner. He, he thought that he wanted to be part of everything that was going on. But, he, but, but behind the back, he was giving away this land around the lake. Everybody knew something wasn't right. But Tony Saunders was clever. He got himself in more trouble than Joseph Harris could ever get. <laughs> He's being sued by everybody just about been home. You got the police chief suing him. He fired the police chief and brought in his buddy. His buddy is his brat brother. He, he became the new chief of police. So that so the other chief filed suit against him. He fired the two other white officers. They filed suit against him. He fired the guy at the cemetery. He filed suit against him. <laughs> and, and look, here's the thing. Everybody don't want their lawsuit against him. So Ben Harper taking a beating financially. But here's the deal. We've been fighting this battle for a long time. But the point is we got to get stronger. We got to get bigger. We got to bring more people into this fight. Down in Ben Harbor, the people are afraid. You know, like you mentioned how many people have left the city of Detroit. Ben Harbor had 45,000 people in, in Ben Harbor. Now we got less than 10,000. You see, and, and they know what they're doing. No jobs. You know, we're talking about 70% of the people that live in Benton Harbor is unemployed. You're talking about 90% living below the poverty level. You've been there. Y'all know how things are in Benton Harbor. And, and what they do, they keep you that way. They keep you fighting over the few jobs they have. That's way that they don't have to do no fighting themselves. So we have to change the way we do business and stand up to these people. Every chance I get, I go and pick at Whirlpool. If they sneeze too loud, I'm going to get them. I don't care what they do, and this is what you have to do, too. We have to learn to fight back on every issue. When we're able to do that, we can do some terrible, good, great things. And, and I, I tell you this. Let, let me talk a little bit about this mayor we got. Uh-oh. Oh, tell it. And, you know, Marcino was talking about how this guy be giving these lap dances <laughs> to the executives. He, he go around, he got a nice car though. <laughs> they, they gave him, they, he got a nice Cadillac, a, a convertible Cadillac. He got a nice big house. He got all this. Got a, he, he even got a job he don't even have to go to. Yeah. You see? But all he got to do is keep giving away land. Me and out of land. Giving away the future of the residents of the city of Benton Harbor. That's what he's doing. Until we learn to stop these people, we have to stop them. 
We have to go to their houses and pick at their house, go to their jobs, pick at their job, and go to their church, pick at their church. We have to show them that we're not going to take this crap no more. Until we're able to do this, it's going to continue this way. Someone always want to drive a nice car. Someone always want to live in a nice house. Someone always want to do these things. That's but the right. point is, you, it's not about you. It's about the future of our children. That's, right. That's what we're fighting for. Yeah. We're right. fighting for the future. Yeah. And until we learn to do that, we're going to continue doing the same thing. You see, let, let, me, let me tell you just one quick thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here myself. But no. No. I was... Uh, See, I was flying in from, from California, and during the flight, I was from San Francisco, the plane took a wide turn, took a little dip, going over the San Mateo Bridge, and it started levering off. As it levered off, the steward got up and said, if by chance this plane starts to descend, or start to go down, you ought to reach up and pull the mask down and put it on your face first. Right. Not that you're more important than your wife, your children, or anybody else, but they may not be able to help you if you don't put the mask on your face first. So what we have done here, here in the state of Michigan, let's go for Detroit, Let's go for Flint, that go for uh, Pontiac, that go for Benton Harbor, that go for all these other cities. We have put the mask on the wrong face. We have allowed other people to live while we're dying. We have allowed these corporations to take over and we're suffering. In the city of Benton Harbor, the water bill then tripled. And there's unemployment, I'm, I'm talking 70% of the people unemployed, 90% live below the poverty level. And Whirlpool don't pay no water. We caught Whirlpool stealing water to water this golf course. This is a good story too. They was out watering the golf course and the pipe bust. And when the pipe bust, we had the city of Benton Harbor had to go out and fix it because it was their water. When the guy was out fixing the, the, the water pipe, he said someone has spiced into your water supply. That's why the pipe busts. And we found out it was Whirlpool and the golf course. They was willing to pay $172,000. So you know if they were willing to pay $172,000 for water, it had to be close to a million dollars. So instead of me sending them to jail, they made a commitment to pay the $172,000. But here's the bad part, we never got the check. That's how corporations deal. So we have to learn to do things correctly. We cannot put the mask on the wrong face. When we put the mask on the wrong face, we die and they continue to live. And that's what's happening today. And I want you people to know today, Detroit, Benton Harbor, we're connected. We're connected at the hill. We're going to continue to do the things that need to be done. We're going to fight back. Let's say it all together. 